Hi, I'm Nikki Fitzgerald. I am the owner and CEO of a lovely lodge in Kenya called Angama Mara. So tell us, Nikki, how did the pandemic hit Kenya? Take us back to March 2020. It came from nowhere, literally from nowhere. It could have been a bushfire that burnt the lodge down. It, it felt that drastic, that fast and that catastrophic. We weren't either operationally or emotionally prepared for this instant shutdown. We don't even close the lodge once a year for uh, low season or for maintenance. We truck along 365 and suddenly here we are, doors closed and, and we simply don't know when the world will get back on its feet. Wildlife tourism plays a major role in Kenya and in Africa, just in the preservation and conservation of wildlife. So tell us how this delicate balance between uh, tourism, wildlife conservation, local communities, and, and really how this issue of poaching has become a, a challenge and a struggle, has been for a long time, but continues even to today. You know, Rob, the purists would say that um, wildlife tourism is, is not good for conservation, but I really beg to differ. Poachers don't like people. They don't like to see safari vehicles, road teams working on the roads and the reserves. The presence of people plays a huge factor in keeping poachers away. Secondly, much needed revenue through park fees and conservancy fees to, to maintain these lovely wild places. It, it does cost a fortune. I know people kind of think, well, why would it cost a fortune? Well, we've got huge pieces of land. Well, the perimeters of those lands need to be protected from, from poaching. And then just the infrastructure of roads. And then thirdly, obviously, it creates massive opportunity, employment for those communities that live around these parks. And obviously, with tourism shutting down in Kenya, I, I assume it's been decimated. How has this impacted the poaching going on? The smaller operators haven't been able in Kenya, in the Masai Mara in particular, haven't been able to look after their staff during this pandemic. And they've been sent home on indefinite unpaid leave. What does that mean? That means you go home to your village, uh, your community, your family, and there's no money for food. And then, as a result of that, you will put out some snares and you will poach bush meat to feed your family. I've heard that since the shutdown, uh, the snares have tripled. So that is a direct impact of, of, of shutdown. And of course, it's easier to get into the park because there's, there's nobody there. International tourism is still stopped, essentially. So this issue of people just needing food to survive, that's a basic principle. They need food on the table to support their family. So what's the solution here? What has been incredible to see is how the global community has come together um, to support initiatives across Africa on both feeding communities and uh, making sure that uh, guides, rangers get paid so they, they can carry on with their good work. My appeal is every dollar counts in Africa. Five dollars goes such a long way and you'd be surprised if it's just a little amount, that'll help. And I'm so proud of the fact that at the ATCF, we can change our, our direction immediately and, and make an impact where it's needed the most right now. I'm hoping this coming back to Africa will be a, a good antidote for what how people have battled emotionally through this lockdown. I think it's, it's hit a lot of people very hard on, on, on this, this terrible fear of, of, you know, what does this world come to? Well, I can tell you, come back to Africa and you'll fall in love with the world again in a heartbeat.